welcome to the Whiskey Dan Radio Show. Tonight we got Maker's Mark Whiskey, and uh, we got a guest again. You gonna introduce yourself, man? Uh, I'm Joshy Jensen. Uh, Juicebox underscore Josh sixty nine on Instagram. No four twenty, just sixty nine. Just sixty nine. Six- <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, so I've been sitting on this bottle of Maker's Mark for fucking month and a half. I just like bought it and I was like, oh, I'm going to need it for the show. And then now I got it. And here we are. And like I said, I haven't drank in seven days. So this is my first, uh, first taste. Well, cheers, man. Cheers. It's a decent whiskey. That's nice. Uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, my dad used to live in Kentucky. No, really? Uh, Lexington when I was a younger and oh shit. Wow. Uh, he used to have a couple of these laying around every once in a while and I've, uh, the only time I've had Maker's Mark was at a party, and I was already shit faced. I was like, "Oh, it's got wax on it," and like at that point, you just you can't taste anything really. Yeah. And I might have like a slight bias towards because I haven't drank in forever, or oh, it feels like forever. So like, it tastes super good to me. It's definitely a bourbon whiskey, but it's not like super sweet because a lot of bourbons I drink them and it's like, "Wow, that's gonna make me throw up." Or feel like it. I mean, for a mid-level price point, it's it's, like, it's a good bourbon. It's like, like thirty-five bucks. Yeah, I mean, if I were to have my druthers, I would choose Four Roses over Maker's mm. Mark, just on just on price point, but also sure. tasting notes. I genuinely enjoy uh, Four Roses. I love it. Or F- Old Forester. Okay, yeah, I've seen that one. I, mean, I, uh, <laughs> I like cheap shit. Um, I'm trying to bring people to the church of Old Milwaukee. Uh. <laughs> I almost brought you a six pack of old Milwaukee. Dude, I bought night. a thirty pack on Thursday. I was like, "Fuck getting toilet paper." I'm getting old Milwaukee. Yeah, it was. I was in between like old Milwaukee or hams, but they didn't have either one, so I went with Coors. Dude, Coors is. I am more than okay with Coors. Coors is the tits. I love banquet, man. Yeah, like if, if banquet's like on sale, like I totally get it. But if it's like you know, because it's like seven dollars more for the thirty pack, mm-hmm. I'm just like, nah, I'm gonna get that bold Milwaukee. I actually grew up. <laughs> Not far from this brewery. Yeah, my, it's, it's in. Uh, it's just west of Denver. Yeah, in, in Golden. Golden. Yeah. My uh, my Jordan middle school school bus passed the no uh, brewery every single day. That's fucking on my way home. From that's school. the tits, man. Yeah, man. Uh, a bunch of our neighbors worked for them, and one of the benefits for working for Coors is that you get uh, uh, what is it like a one case or two cases of beer a month just for free. What am I going to do for the rest of the weeks? <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, no, you're right. <laughs> it's, it's like, well, shit, that's only good for like 10 days. <laughs> yeah, man. Actually, uh, speaking of bourbon, last time I was in Denver, I went to an old forester uh, tasting oh, okay. and uh, education seminar, basically. Oh, wow. And we w- went through four different whiskeys, and they just dropped their rye, and we got to taste them and taste them with a rep and talk about the history but behind the mashes that they were, yeah. that they were founded off of. Super cool experience. Yeah. See, the last time I was in Colorado, which was last summer in, like, July, I want to say, we went up to Winter Park area, and uh, we got – oh, shit, I, I just finished. No, there's a little bit left. It's a, I went, we, There's a distillery up there called Fraser Valley, and it's like oh, Fraser yeah, yeah. Valley Gin. And that shit is the fucking tits, and it turned me on to have a gin and tonics. Like that's like my go-to drink when I go to a bar, and they only G&T's have like dog. like G&D's. like at any time they have just like oh we got like Michelob Ultra. It's like let me just get a gin and tonic, man. I'm I, I want something that's gonna be nice. What's your go-to? Is it because uh, people? I feel like when we're talking about gin, somebody's either they're a Tang or a Hendrix. You know, like what their go-to gin is. I'm a beef eater. Beef eater. Yeah. All right. Actually, like, because, like, I like that it makes me hurt. <laughs> That's fair. That's uh, well, fair. like, honestly, like, in, like, if you do that and you squeeze a lime into it, it takes away a lot of that, like, harshness. Yeah, the astringence of the uh, lime kind of cuts the, uh, that alcohol burn a little bit because then you're just like, oh, citric acid, tight. Yeah. But, like, I like the alcohol burn because it makes me feel alive. Oh, for sure. You know, on the inside. Like, and that's why this bourbon, uh, Man, this is good. And I, I'm happy. It's it's also it's a little bit higher alcohol than what I thought. It's 45, percent so a little bit a little bit higher on the end there. It's super easy to spot. It's tan label with a uh, bunch of wax on the top. You pull a little wax seal off, so it makes you feel like in the 1800s. But yeah, it's about 35 bucks, like a mid price point. Uh, highly, I would I'd recommend it just for something to sip on, or if you want to mix it with something. Um, An old fashioned with this is just yeah, but it's, Maker's old fashioned is classic. Yeah, it's very good. Like I would I would like I. 
one thing about the show is that I shit on Jack Daniels a lot because I, I fucking hate Jack Daniels because it, it's terrible. Like, it's objectively, like, it's $9 whiskey in a $30 price point. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just the sour mash in general, I think. Like, I'd rather have Old Crow. Uh, <laughs> you know what I would have r- rather than Jack Daniels is uh, Kentucky Deluxe, or as mm-hmm. we back home call it, Kentucky Delicious. <laughs> Uh, or, KD, or man. old granddad. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, there, was, fuck there, it. there was a there was a dive bar around the corner from my house that sold uh, a Pabst Blue Ribbon and a shot of old granddad for five dollars. <laughs> oh, so kind of like Rose City, how they do the Jim Beam yeah. and Lone Star. Yeah, yeah, but it wow, was Pabst boy. and oh god, old granddad, dude. Like, because uh, every time I vacation, I try to visit like a brewery or like a mm-hmm. bar or something like that, just just kind of get like a local vibe for it. The town that I find Old Milwaukee on tap is the town I moved to. <laughs> I'm tired of drinking it out of the can. I want the tap, damn it. You got to move up to uh, Minnesota? or Yeah, like I'm pretty sure the Great Lakes area would definitely have. Oh, yeah. Either that or like Schiltz or something. Schlitz? Yeah. yeah I'm, yeah. I, I'm yeah. so like, that's so foreign to me. I don't even know how to fucking say oh, it. Oh, my God. I love Schlitz. I uh, I love shit beer. Yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I love craft. I love the... Sure, like, absolutely. Craft uh, that yeah, goes like, behind it. Yeah, they're like, like, hey, man, this is the only place you could fucking get this shit. And you're like, damn, this is really good. Oh, yeah. But after like three, you're kind of like, dude, that's a lot of sugar. I don't feel too good. I mean, my favorite style is Saison. And my the history behind Saisons and Beer de Garde in the French and Belgian provinces, yeah. like northern France, southern Belgium, yeah. super cool. Yeah, Super, absolutely. super cool the way these beers were brewed. But... You know what? If you're gonna put a saison or a Pabst in front of me, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm reaching for the PBR, man. I'm reaching for the PBR because you know what? Five percent versus eight percent. I'm drinking more. Yeah, I'm gonna last longer. Oh, absolutely. Just, whatever, man. Yeah, like uh, that's why. Uh, yeah, like a, a lot of times, like a, if when I'm out vacationing, going to, like all these different breweries and stuff, I wind up just like really missing like Old Milwaukee or just like a Coors because I'm like I just want something that's not gonna make me just feel like I ate breakfast. <laughs> like is that is that too much to ask? Well, I love the uh, I love the uh, I read this book about it. It's called Brew Like a Monk, and it's about how monasteries in Germany and all these other uh, kind of Western European mm-hmm. uh, countries, a lot of the Catholic monks specifically in Germany and Belgium, like, they brewed beer so that they, when they went on these fasts, they wouldn't be lacking nutrients. Oh, okay. And so I'm just sitting there reading this book, like, holy shit, these monks must have been hammered. They're <laughs> drinking beer for breakfast. <laughs> you know, no no uh, food to nah. it, They were just drinking that. beer and water Yeah. at that point, and they yeah. weren't really eating. Yeah. Maybe they felt closer to God, being slightly inebriated like that all the time. I mean, I do. I mean, yeah, same, absolutely. But like what I was saying, like you're staying up till five in the morning last weekend with Trent. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I love how like with, with like you get to a point like in inebriation where like you're just like, dude, fuck politics. Let's just talk about God. <laughs> like, and, like you like everybody just kind of like yeah. I, I'm kind of getting a real good vibe here. Like, like, like I love that point in the night where it's so late, no one's being an asshole anymore, and everyone's just like, "Yeah, dude, we're all human." Like, I, I like reaching that point, but I probably do that like three times a year. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like you've got to have like a like a specific group of friends to be able to do that. Yeah, for sure. So I know my Baltimore friends and I do that. Um, my Denver friends and I, we will uh, get unreasonably like political and like <laughs> serious about things whereas like my baltimore friends we're all from different walks of life and we will just kill a 30 and yeah. be goofballs man yeah, it's like hey man we play mario kart like fuck yeah i do and you're just like i also got this 30 pack of bud like all right <laughs> let's fucking go man but shit anyway uh let's talk fucking star wars all i right. know you're a huge star wars huge. fan i just yeah, yeah, Cam did that. Yeah, Cam actually did do this. He'll be on tomorrow. Is he, yeah, what Cam I is going to be on tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, the episode probably will be posted for another week, but yeah, he, we're recording tomorrow. Yeah, he did this uh, Rebels tattoo on me. I'm a huge fan, dude. I'm, See, I've always been an Empire guy because I like order. Yeah, space Nazis. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Hey, man. 
Six million is an awful lot. Let's just, let's just be real about it. I Jesus, mean, you, fuck, you that take went it dark. To the, you take it those statistics to the galaxy. You look at all the Twi'leks that were killed and, oh. or taken into sex slavery. Man, it's it's a lot more. Yeah, I know. Shit. Anyway. The emperor was worse. Dude, the emperor was fucked, and nobody wants to talk about that. Shit, but okay, this is this is my like. I like Star Wars to a point. I okay. Can't, I can't get into it like overwhelmingly, primarily because like there's other shit that I'm kind of into, and it's just like you know there's there's a big fan base for it, and that's fine. Like I have Lego Tie Fighter, it's Darth yeah. Vader's tie, and I got like I used to play Star Wars Battlefront Two on Xbox, fucking religiously. Awesome game. Dude. I had it for PlayStation Two. Okay, yeah. Like uh, to this day, holds in my opinion. I'm not a huge video games guy, so like I guess my opinions are not doesn't hold that strong, <laughs> but uh, it in my opinion, shows, first of all, gameplay is just awesome. Yeah. But, but Like big team battles? Post, because that game came out post Attack of the Clones. Yeah, it came out in 05. Yeah, so it was right after Attack of the Clones came out, yeah. before <laughs> Revenge of the Sith. So while you were playing that game, you actually had some level of understanding about what the Clone Wars actually looked like, which was tight to me. Yeah. See, because I, um, I didn't get that game till like, I started playing it probably in, like, 07, like, after, like, all the first six series, the first six movies that were done. Mm-hmm. But it didn't, like, change the fact that I loved the game. And I love the movie, I love episodes two through six. Yeah. And, because, like, like, Phantom Menace is, like, that's just, like, extra shit. If you want to watch it, you can, but it's not, like, you don't have to. Man, I'm going to disagree. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be the person who disagrees on this, because certain per- parts of Phantom Menace sucked. Yes. They really did. Dude, and, certain parts and, of episode two, Attack like, of the Clones, are terrible. Look, when when episode one came out, I was pretty young. I mean, I was born in ninety four. I'm twenty five now. Yeah. So it I came out in ninety nine, two thousand one. Oh one. Okay. No, I thought 2000. it was ninety nine, two thousand. Fuck. Because like, because, because there were games yeah. for it on the N sixty four. It was pre. It was pre nine eleven. That's how I yeah. remember it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, unfortunately, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's like the mark in your memory. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nine eleven. What happened here? What happened? Here? <laughs> uh, so, um, no, it was. I mean, it, for all intents and purposes, like it was good. It was a bad movie. It was. Yeah, just like objectively. Objectively, it was bad, but there's certain aspects of it that you have to take away that you're like, oh man. That was pretty fucking tight. Yeah, like pod racing. Pod racing. That was cool as shit. Uh, Darth Maul. Liam Neeson. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, like, like and, and Qui Gon Jinn was so cool. Why'd they fucking kill him? Like, right they had the to. They had to. I if guess. you if you look back into the novels, um, Qui Gon Jinn actually taught, ended up teaching Yoda from beyond the grave how to turn himself into a Force ghost. Qui Gon Jinn was the first person to turn himself into a Force ghost. Oh, okay. So. Uh, and having Liam Neeson play this badass Jedi, and you know, Qui Gon Jinn almost went over to the dark side way early on. He was oh, in, really? he was in love with this other Jedi girl who ended up passing away, if I'm not for uh, mistaken. And she, the whole thing was really unfortunate. He goes through this whole like self discovery of like, oh my god, I'm so angry because this person that I've been through all of this Jedi training with is now dead and I'm angry and blah, blah, blah ends up almost going to the dark side. And then he became, he goes into like this forced meditation and he, uh, became like super, super self-aware and analytical. Oh, okay. So before Phantom Menace, he was a very, very like almost Anakin like, Oh, okay. uh, Jedi, where he was like really into his feelings, and then after all of this happened, and it's ironic that he's the one that finds Anakin because previous to all of that happening to the woman he was in love with, he was a lot like Anakin when he reacts with his feelings. Oh, okay. Post that, he goes very analytical and is very like staunch. If this is what the Force wills, that's what I will do. Whereas, like, and then he discovers Anakin, and Anakin grows up and does literally the exact opposite. No, oh, okay. Okay. I can see that. Qui-Gon Jinn is, I don't know if you can tell, but one of my favorite Jedis, and I'm not a big fan of the Jedi Order. Right. I mean, I mean I'll let Mace Windu is cool as shit. But... 
<laughs> but but anyway, so like uh, the reason like I, I like episodes too, uh, mostly because like you, you really start to get in like the the war that was going on, mm-hmm. and then like you start to see like the political puppeteering going on. In episode three, you get to see like oh shit, like oh okay, Darth Vader, I fucking get it, like all right. Episode four, like the first one, is good. Uh, it, but it's just it's like a basic like damsel in distress kind of story, you know, like honestly. I mean, but like it's, but but there's a lot of like uh, setup for something bigger. Yeah. And then uh, Empire Strikes Back is like that setup. Like, oh my god, like, Empire is awesome, dude. Like Empire Strikes Back is the fucking magnum opus. Like I don't think that they're ever gonna be able to top that, regardless of how much money they throw at it. Yeah. I mean, look, I was a huge fan of Revenge of the Sith. They <clears throat> they don't no Star Wars movie, even in the OG, has the opening that revenge of the sith has i mean mm-hmm. cinematically i think revenge of the sith was just awesome yeah um i mean they had the cgi at that technology at that point yeah. that they could really do what they wanted to do i have to hide um well and this is this is taking out you know rogue one and the the side stories i'm yeah, speaking sure. just in the skywalker saga yeah um uh, but empire strikes back dude oh my god such a good movie. So good. So good. And, and I mean, I like it because like it ends on like a bad note. You're like, what the fuck? Like, like that's how the movie ends. I know you wanted to talk about this, so I'm just gonna <laughs> drop the ball. Uh, when it comes to the remasters, the 1997 remastered mm-hmm. is the one that I will go with as my just steady line. Okay. Um, the OG movies, as great as they were. I think the 1997 retouch was really needed. Okay. Oh yeah, and, that, and that's fair. Um, I have them on VHS. They sit very delicately yeah. See, in my I, entertainment it, system. Like I have the 1995 final releases where they did all three of them in a box set. Mm-hmm. Got my VHS for like 15 bucks mm-hmm. in like 2004, and that was the that was like the last iteration of like the theatrical releases. Problem is, being VHS tapes, they do deteriorate over time, so the picture quality is just not yeah. quite as good. I mean, I have the 1997 box set. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, like, yeah, like, you're just like, ah, oh, fucking picture's not quite as good. But you're, you're getting, like, you're still getting the good part about it. What I don't like is that, like, what's available on Disney+, Plus, and, like, if you get it on Blu-ray, you're getting, like, 40 years of just different CGI just fucking stacked on top of itself. And then, like, you just kind of, come on, like, George, oh, yeah. like, put put the pin down, man. Just let people enjoy your painting. That's that, that's just how I feel about it. Yeah, and it's unfortunate to me because, like, I feel like instead of going into going into retouching what he was doing, mm-hmm. he could have just used that energy. Like, okay, again, baseline's nineteen ninety seven retouch. Nineteen ninety seven retouch, cool with. A lot of that was rad. I mean, even with opening up Bespin. In the 1995 retouch, they didn't do the the windows on Cloud City. In the 1997 one, they did the windows okay, on Cloud yeah, City. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. So, I mean, before 1997, the whole Cloud City scene in uh, Empire Strikes Back just feels so claustrophobic. Yeah, because it's just white. It's just white. Yeah. And then they in the 1997, they opened that up, made it really, like, made you really f- understand what cloud city was see all the clouds around you yeah super cool um and even i mean the wampa scene was extended in 1997 yeah, it, it always felt short and rushed yep for, for like such like a, a titular moment in the yeah. story when like he kind of learns how to like use the force and uh the rancor scene actually in oh, okay. uh yeah, Return like, of the Jedi was, like was extended yeah. in 1997 as well, and they brought the actress that played the Twi'lek back. Really? And she, it, it wasn't just a deleted scene that they added in. They actually reshot the entire scene. Really? Damn, yeah. that's impressive. Did it really well and extended it. Um, but after that, man, I mean, even when it comes to inserting uh, uh, what's Anakin into the Force Ghost scenes. Yeah, and, like, I was not okay with that. Dude, I wasn't cool with it. Yeah, because like, like, when I first watched all of them, I was probably like eight. My dad ran it from the video, like a video movie store we had in Hawkins. And I remember seeing, I was like, oh shit, like who's that? He's like, oh, that's Anakin if he like would have grown up 
like without all the scars and all mm-hmm. that and everything. I was like, oh shit, like that's fucking cool. And then they got fucking whatever his nuts is sitting up there, like no Hayden Christensen. Yeah, like get the get the fuck out of here. Like, aren't you supposed to be a jumper or some shit ass yeah. movie? Like, get the fuck out. Not happy with was that. Hayden Christensen in Jumper. I think I think he was. I think that was, he was the lead. Really? Like he, he's not a bad actor. But he's not a good well, actor. Star Wars has had does have a uh, history of ruining actors' careers. It really does. The, the only one that had a good career out of it was uh, fucking Harrison Ford, Samuel L. Jackson. And so, well, okay, that's different. He like Samuel L. Jackson like, had a career. Prior you win to that. McGregor. But he also had a career yeah, like, prior yeah, like, to that. yeah, like you know, where this is like their first like big debut. Like no, I can't no. think of uh, anyone who like did really well. What about uh, Natalie Portman? Was that really her first movie? Was... That wasn't her first, but that was definitely, like, one of her big ones. Yeah. I mean, you know, because she was super young when she went into Phantom Menace. Yeah. She was, like, 12 or 13 or something. She wasn't that young. Oh. But she was definitely not, you know, 25 right. when she was playing Padme Amidala. Yeah. I, I'd have to Google that shit. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> to know well, exactly like, it, how old it, she was. But... Well, also, like, she also played in, like, Black Swan not shortly thereafter. And that was like such like a cult <laughs> hit. I think that really kind of transformed like. Black Swan was tight. I saw that in theater. Did you just watch it for the her scene with Megan Fox? No, dude. I I was genuinely intrigued uh, on the entire storyline. See, I've only seen bits and pieces of it. Like it's, I've seen like the first, not not the beginning and not the end, but like most. Of the it's movie. one of those that kind of reminds me of uh, Shutter Island. Oh, okay. Where yeah. you're just like at the end, you're just like I don't know what was real and what was not. Yeah. I love uh, those kind of movies, dude. Shutter Island was. Shutter yeah. Island was tight. I like that movie a lot. Super it's tight. Like they don't ever go to Black Sea. It's like why don't we go to Black Sea? Because you're fucking in there, <laughs> weirdo. Get the fuck out. Anyway, weirdo. Yeah. Ugh, man, such a good movie. But yeah, like, like I do like Star Wars, but I'm not. I don't have Disney Plus. Okay. Uh, and primarily just because like I don't like having like a shitload of subscription stuff because then I just feel like I'm bleeding money. Um, and I also don't like being a bum on my friends. Like, hey man, let me get that Netflix log. And like, no, like I'll just fucking pay for it whenever you know whatever and i'm not against watching it necessarily it's just that i feel that um because i watched episode seven and, I, and after a while leaving the theater i was like well that, like that looked really good um but this is the first one in the new series yeah so it was yeah seven right? yeah no i'm just i'm just thinking of the title oh my god why is it escaping me the whole new trilogy just... yeah but uh see yeah that's the point of good like i was like wow that, like that looked really good but didn't have a whole lot of substance, and I felt like it. Like they just literally just used the the, the floor plan of episode four oh, yeah. and just redid episode oh, yeah. seven. Oh yeah, and, and and that I'm not like trying to break an echo chamber by saying like everybody knows that that's what he Every, did. They they did it well. Okay, JJ did episode seven. It was cool with it, but it was just a rehashing. And then you put in episode eight. And what was it, Ryan Adams? I didn't even watch that. Takes over. Movie. Oh my god, what a hard piece of like. I don't want to call. I, I hate calling it garbage because it's Star Wars, and I do love Star Wars. Sure. Uh, it's such an inherent part of my childhood, and I'm so deep into even the novels that like. I see most people who aren't super into the novels, and there's like so much lore into that. Oh my god! That made so it, much and, lore. And so like, so like when you watch the movies, you're like, dude, you're burning past all the cool shit. I, I actually, <laughs> I actually played a re, uh, a really short recent D and D campaign. Oh, okay. Uh, with my brother, and we played. Yeah, I saw you had a post on there, like D and D night. Yeah, like, oh, well, shit. no, I play D and D every Sunday night. Oh, with, really? Uh, with a group of guys. Yeah, um, it's kind of cool. So, uh. The guys I play with, we're all kind of borderline a support group for each other. I'm not going to get into why, but That's cool. um, we play D&D on Sunday nights. But I decided that I was going to – there's all these homebrew rules online on Reddit, and you can get them for playing in the Star Wars universe. And so oh, wow, I decided okay. I was going to pl- – and so we I wrote a campaign that went – and I DM'd it but it was right around the time that the Mandalorian is taking place. And, uh, but it's, it's different. Uh, like it's, it's same era, but, uh, just takes place elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. Super Like cool. you have a huge map to work oh with. Oh my God. So it doesn't, you know, it, yeah. And you can, I mean, when you think about the clone wars, when you think about the, the, I'm speaking to the mic, 
when you think about the empire, there is so much that is also happening without all of that politics going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, just think about the layman, the one dude who works at like a as a welder at a shipbuilding factory. Yeah. There is so much going on economically, and I think that's one way to look at Star Wars that's really cool is just think about what else is happening. Yeah, rather than just like the Skywalker trilogy or like Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. Yeah. Metachlorians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's yeah. too funny. But, oh, yeah, but like, uh, like I didn't even watch Episode Eight, and like when it came out, like it fucking flopped because it's it's like a lot of people felt like it was pushing some like political agenda in like today's terms. Yeah, I kind of did. And then like so many people, like what? I don't give a shit if you're like left or right. Star Wars fans, like on both ends, were like, I I I go to this to fucking get a break, man. Like, yeah, don't cram this shit down my throat. And it was Ryan Adams just doing kind of a okay, I'm going to take this and do whatever the fuck I want with it. It's like, dude, this is like a billion-dollar franchise. Mm-hmm. Don't fuck it up. And he did. But That's did, why J.J. J. Abrams took it back. Oh, really? And he did Rise of Skywalker. So, and Rise of Skywalker was tight. I enjoyed, cinematically, I enjoyed Rise of Skywalker. Okay. It did enough fan service. That ser- recently came out. Yeah, that was in Christmas time. Yeah. It did enough fan service where I was like, tight, all right. This stuff is happening, you know, like uh, enough expanded universe that I wasn't unhappy. Uh, And I don't speak for all Star Wars fans. I just speak for myself. Like I sat there in the crowd. I took my clone troopers helmet with me and a lightsaber. That's how you fucking do it. And uh, my Chewbacca t-shirt. And I, (laughs) uh, I, I was just a hodgepodge of a costume and I enjoyed the movie for what it was. I'm, I guess I'm just not anymore looking for Empire Strikes Back anymore. Yeah. Well, like, uh, that's kind of how I felt when I got Fallout 4. I I was kind of expecting Fallout New Vegas 2. Yeah, dude. That's why I got it, man. All right. Uh, and I was expecting Fallout New Vegas 2, and I didn't uh, get that. And in my second playthrough, I'm like, nah, just, like, it's a good game. Just enjoy the fucking game. Yeah. Like, like it's not going to be as good as what you want it to be because, one, you didn't make it. And, two, quit putting expectations that other people don't have in your life. So. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> at whatever point as a fandom, you kind of have to be like, okay, it is what it is. Yeah. We're never going to get what we wanted but that's because it's never going to be that and empire strikes back and the original trilogy was just so groundbreaking because it was so different like it spawned a whole fucking like space frenzy space nazis and space samurais what more do you want yeah that's really what it was and that was tight to me but we're never gonna get like are they nazis are they more like the british empire they're, they're, I mean, they're modeled after the Third Reich. Sure. George Lucas has completely told, yeah. come out and been like, yo, these are supposed to kind of like resemble the Third Reich. But does that make them to... the bad guys? I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm just being devil's advocate. All right, man. No, okay. The thing is like, uh, like my There's bro- two Jewish guys I know, sitting I know. here. Like, like, yeah. well, like my on. brother, my brother likes to break that joke up or he, he's like, he's like, uh, he'll, he'll do the thing. It's like. You know, some people argue that there's like good guy. It was good versus evil in like World War Two, and then some people want to argue that um, like like both sides were like both sides were kind of evil, and then some people want to argue that it was good versus evil in World War Two, and I'm like, oh Jesus fuck. I feel like World War Two <laughs> though, there's just like so much more nuance. To oh that. yeah, like, I mean, like 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 Eastern Front, whole different war. You compared can't to you can't even else. just like take Star Wars or any fictional thing and just be like it's just this and this, yeah. like. Like, that is the way it is for most fictional things, but then you take it like a real life war, and there's so much more nuance to everything. Yeah. Uh, like, it, I really love um, learning about uh, the, the Japanese war, like the, the whole Pacific theater, mm-hmm. primarily the conflict with China. Because it was so, like, like, we don't even talk about that in grade schools or barely even in college, like, unless you take like a Chinese or Japanese history course. Like so many more people fucking died over there, and we never bring it up. Like, like, like we act like nine eleven was the worst tragedy to ever befall mankind. Like, the the nationalist government in China like broke the dam on the Yellow River and killed like a million of their own people to stop the Japanese army. Well, there to this day, there's a ton of like racism, and uh, 
and dissent between the two countries. Dude, I like, mean, like I mean, all, they like hate all Asian, each other. Like all Asian countries are super racist. But, but Korea, South Korea, hates Japan as well. Yeah, because they invaded them and occupied them in 1910. Yeah, and didn't relinquish that until 1945. Well, so, so, um, I have a friend. Well, she, unfortunately, she is no longer with us. She passed a few years ago, but. Her family is from the Philippines. Okay. She was first generation American. And um, her, when they came over to the U.S., they had to go through a lot of different countries to get here. Okay. From the Philippines. Oh, there wasn't just like a direct line to get them out of. See, that's so weird. No, it, and this, I mean, consider that when they came over, it was back in the 50s. Okay. And then her mom was born. Like in the Philippines in the fifties, and oh, okay. then she was born in the nineties. So um, anyway, they had to get over here, and because they were Filipino, they ran into a lot of prejudice. Because in from what I understood from her in Asia, basically the more brown you are, the worse you are. Yeah. Kind of yeah, that's yeah, hundred percent. And yeah, so that's... like. Koreans, Japanese, and I mean, I'm not an authority like, like, to like, speak on that. But. But, but like like Northern Chinese and Mongolians are typically quite a bit whiter. Mm -hmm. Southern Chinese are a lot more darker, like Vietnamese and stuff like that. So they just shit on those people because like, oh, well, that's why you aren't as educated. That's why you're all a bunch of farmers. Yeah. Well, I mean, but ironically enough, the farther south you go, also the whiter you get. I mean, yeah. you look at South America. My, I've got friends from Argentina. Yeah, and they look white as you and me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. My boy Gonzo, you until he he talked, which is funny. He came over to the U.S. and the way he learned English, um, and it might be just a joke he tells everybody, but I'm completely convinced <laughs> is that he watched uh, MTV growing up, and the way he speaks to this day, he's like he's our age. He, um. He speaks, like, with early 2000s slang constantly. Yeah, okay. So he'll be like, oh, oh, bro, that was big pimping. And he'll, like, fist bump you. And you're like, dude, what, what is this, 2003? Come on, man. Bro, dude, man, this party's crunk as shit. Like, <laughs> nobody says that, man. Like, I, like, I, I, want, I want to bring back crunk because I like Lil John, but... <laughs> Dang, Lil John's tight. <laughs> He's side boys. No, but uh, the, the thing is, is that... Uh, but it's, it's really like I learned this in because I took a Latin American history class. So which makes me a fucking expert. <laughs> uh, but like a lot of people that are Argentine and Chilean are uh, Italian descent. So like they're white and then they just learned Spanish when they moved over here. Argentina and Chile hate each other. Yeah, fucking hate each they other. They hate each Dude, other. Dude, Bolivia hates Chile because Chile took like their access to the ocean in like the 1800s. Oh my and God. They, and they like still fucking hate each other. And it's like, it's uh, like, we talk about like how like the United States, like, oh, like the South, like they fucking hate Yankees. They're tired of people like from New York moving to Alabama. It's like, yeah, that exists. But people don't get shot over it like they do in South America. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's much worse there. Like, at least we all, like, and they all speak the same language. They all have, like, a general, like, I would say that, like, culturally speaking, they're about as distant as, like, somebody from upstate New York and somebody from South Alabama. You know, like, yeah. like they're still, like, you know, South American, like, the same way they're still, like, American here. Mm -hmm. But there's, like, one eats collard greens, one has no idea what the fuck that is. Yeah. You know? Uh, fun fact, I hate collard greens. Oh, dude, get out, man. I, I, I just, <laughs> I hate them. Uh, That's, maybe just add in them cooked, right? No, I've I've had them cooked right. I mean, I mean, objectively speaking, they're good. Uh, I think, but it's like a fried vegetable. I think it's yeah. <laughs> How could you not Who like it? Who wants a fried vegetable? Uh, the South. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I swear to God, fry everything, dude. Like the South is never gonna rise again. They're never gonna have the energy. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like where I'm from. We don't fry shit like as much. You know, no. like like unless um, it's like chicken. Really? Even then, yeah. really. No, no, no. I'm I'm used to like growing up on grilled chicken or like sautéed chicken. I bet you like mayonnaise. Uh, no. Honky. I like I love aioli. <laughs> love aioli. I will. Uh, what like, the fuck? Aioli? What's that? Aioli is pretty much mayonnaise. It's just uh has uh garlic, lemon juice, and salt. It sounds like way instead of mayonnaise. instead of just whipped egg whites. Ugh. I'm just it's not delicious. a fan of mayonnaise, dude. I'm not either. It's just egg it's, whites. It's whipped egg whites. Man, That's all it is. It's fat. Anyway, the point is, uh, you know, like, I used to work at Jimmy John's. So I ate like a shitload of Hellman's mayonnaise and like balloon the fuck up oh, because man. of it. You don't even get the good mayonnaise. I know. Apparently, that was the quote unquote good mayo. QP. Like, 
Oh, really? QP. Oh. Go go to Fresh. Go to the uh, Asian section. They got QP mayo. Add some sriracha. Call it a day. Okay. Yeah, I'll that's good. That I do like mayo and, like, horseradish sauce and, like, roast beef, though. That's pretty fucking good. I'll oh, give, like, I'll give, I'll give like it. Arby's? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm thinking sure. Arby's. <laughs> 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 no. <Nah>, uh, <laughs> shit, David. I keep getting distracted. Fuck. Um, the last thing about the Star Wars, though, I want to talk about is, like, it, like, like you're saying, like it, it's not what you know. You, you're not expecting yeah, Empire Strikes Back to like you know Electric Boogaloo because <laughs> I, I, like that's like too much of like a unrealistic expectation to have. But you're you're perfectly content with it being just like what you're like whatever. Like I'm I'm gonna enjoy it, but I'm not just gonna expect a whole lot out of it. Yeah, is that kind of what you're getting at? Yeah. I mean, look, you get as deep into the lore as like I am, or like my younger brother is. My bro- younger brother falls asleep to lore videos every single night on youtube and uh you get into it as deep as we get and i think it's like balls deep yeah we just (laughs) (laughs) we just expect uh something a little different um we i don't know at least i'm not going to speak for jake but for me i kind of expect what's going to pander to the general audience. Sure. Not what's going to directly pander to me. Yeah. Because if something's going to directly <laughs> pander to me, we're going to, well, dude, there's going to be a lot more detail. Yeah. And like, I, yeah. I'm just, I'm just better off sticking to the novels. Yeah. I, I listen and, to and, them. And, 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 and that's what those ov- novels and audiobooks are for. And for yeah. people that want to like do that yeah. deep dive into it, it's not for people who want to sit down for an hour and 45 minutes and watch like yeah. a pretty cool movie. So. I mean, Unfortunately, if there was a if there was a degree for uh, fictional knowledge of a of a fandom, like I, I I would have a bachelor's right now. But well, considering that the education system cheating, in the United so. States is a uh, is a for profit system, I'm sure there's a university out there that like offers that. Now, what you can do with it, I don't know. Start a YouTube channel, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I've done that. It fucking sucks. I'm sure. W- welcome to the YouTube channel, man. <laughs> Look at the fucking Whiskey Dan radio show where you get belligerently drunk and talk about dicks and tits. Anyway. Hell yeah, dicks and tits. Dicks and tits. Two of my favorite things. Dude, one more than the other, and I'll let the audience figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're you're pretty – because uh, being from, like, the city, mm-hmm. and I am not, like, at all. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't really see concrete until, like, I went to the school. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I never, like, got into skateboarding culture. Okay. Like, it was never, like, a real big thing where I was at. Maybe, like, in middle school, like, some, like, edgy kids. And then by the time we got to high school, they're all a bunch of, like, goat rope and cowboys. Mm -hmm. I put that in quotations. Um, Anyway, so I never got into that. And then, like, now uh, it's super common for, like, a lot of people to have, like, vans or DCs and, like, wear, like, thrasher jackets and shit. And they've never been on a fucking skateboard in their life. Like, as someone who has been around skateboarding culture for, what, 15 years? A lot more. Oh, man, how old am I? Uh, 19 <laughs> years. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I first stepped foot on a skateboard when I was six. Okay, yeah. My mom's ex-boyfriend at that time, he took me, and he, uh, he was a skater. Took me and got me, I was kin- in kindergarten, I made straight A's that year, which, for me, it's tight. <laughs> Even in kindergarten, <laughs> uh, I didn't, I didn't get a C on my handwriting, which is my average. <laughs> All right. Um, I... Fun fact about me, I always scored really low on coloring inside the lines. That really? was a legit thing my school tested on, uh, is coloring skills, and I always did really badly at it's it. It's like messy with the crayons there. I didn't care. I just yeah, wanted to that. draw over the drawing. And you're like, fuck you. Yeah. Do what I want. Yeah. It's my world. Yeah. You live in it. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, actually, that works as a tangent into skateboarding. I mean, skate, skateboarding, for me from the first time i stepped foot on it it was like there was no rules yeah i could you can do whatever the fuck you want on this thing and and i mean i didn't really vibe with team sports i played i played hockey as a kid i played ice hockey and i loved playing ice hockey just because it was so violent and intense and i could just i could just be like fuck you i'm gonna fuck your day up and then i would fuck the guy's day up it's a blast to me um, but with skateboarding it was so independent and it was based off of independent thought still is that um and if you fucking suck you eat shit if you suck you eat <laughs> and it, I, I just feel like it's a really direct or just 
way to like, it was a really good foundation on how to expect life to go for you. Right. If you're going to suck at it, you're going to eat shit. But when it comes to like, and you're right. I mean, it, it's funny. I go to the skate park here in Tyler, right? Mm -hmm. And there's all these kids that go there and I've made friends with a lot of them. A lot of guys, my age, a lot of guy, a lot of kids. I mean, and we just all skate age doesn't matter. We're just hanging out yeah. and you go and you see these kids get dropped off by their moms or their moms are there and they've got these nice vans, really nice clothes and re brand new ass skateboard. They can't skateboard for shit. And then there's these kids with the most ratty clothes you've ever seen. Yeah, it's like, dude, this is like my uncle's old skateboard, but I've put new trucks on it. Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> and and they're sh they're skating better than me. And I'm like, there's two kids, all right? There's there's this kid, John, and this kid, Tony. And they've been skating these ratty boards for forever. And one day I just took it upon myself. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go buy you new skateboards because you need to stop fucking pissing me off with these ratty pieces of shit. <laughs> it's like plywood. And yeah, dude, <laughs> I mean, I mean, one of these kids was like kick flipping a stair set without a nose on his board. It had snapped off and, he was, and he was still like killing it. <laughs> And I was like, Tony, stop pissing. He's 15. He's from the north side. I was like, stop yeah. pissing me off. Go buy yourself a new board. He's like, dude, I can't afford it. And I was like, fuck you. I'm bringing you a new one next week, yeah. dick. And it's like, you see it Thursday. You're going to fucking $140 board, jackass. So I went, went, I went and bought these kids. I mean, it only cost me like 80 bucks to get both of them. But I went oh, and bought okay, these cool. kids skateboards because, you know what? In my in my small view of the world, like that is a good way to help your communities or yeah. just brighten a kid's fucking week. He's 15. Yeah. Dude, when I was 15, all I had was, like, football and, like, Xbox 360. That was it. And was... when it when it comes to, like, this faux consumerism thing that exists within skateboarding culture, it... Like, why does every Mexican kid have a thrasher jacket? It's every <laughs> fucking like... high school kid that has yeah. a thrasher jacket. And none of them remember when Ryan Sheckler fucking hit the, hit the Del Toro fucking 20 set. Like... I remember that shit. I watched Thrasher's Hall or not Hall of Meat, um, King of the Road every summer as a kid. And oh, was that like a, an event that they did? Yeah, it oh, okay. was. They would have these um, different skate teams go on this road trip across the country and have to do these certain ca challenges. So like one maybe like trade clothes with a chick and then do a kickflip. Yeah, and or like. But just dumb things. Yeah, they just, were really dumb, but like it was. But it was cool. It was all in the sake of fun, right? And like, there's this hashtag on Instagram. I'm an Instagram whore. That's uh, <laughs> that's uh, hashtag skateboarding is fun, and it's one of my favorite hashtags because you look it up and it's just all of these things of skateboarding supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be this like thing competition. To... No, I mean, no, I mean, like, granted, you, you can make it one. Oh yeah, like anything can be made, it, but like, it's not supposed to be. Like, it, it's not like I'm better than you. It's like, no, nah, man, we're just chilling. Uh, I mean, it's fun to skate with somebody better than you. Right, because it makes you want to be better. better. Yeah. It just was it, – like, there's this guy, Austin, and he's he's my exact same age, almost within a month. And he oh, is wow, okay, significantly cool. better than me, and we both skate together at skate park. And I look at him, and he'll land something, and I'll be like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you because I have no cartilage in my left knee and I can't even try to land that you dick do you wear like a helmet or anything not anymore no not anymore. I mean like after my 12th concussion I was just like fuck it if I fall I fall dude I played football for 8 years and never had a concussion ah oh, dude or at least I don't remember CT is a bitch dude that like like sometimes like like I, I'll get headaches and shit and I'm just like looking into it and I'm like Man, maybe I got CT because I played inside linebacker and I led my team in tackles two years. Yeah. So I might have something like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to. Hockey gonna combined it with skateboarding. Yeah, I mean, it's like you're kind of recipe for disaster. My last two were really bad. I got one from getting in a bar fight, and I got cracked across the head with a billy club at a bar fight. Mm. I was 21, freshly 21. Just got knocked out right then and there. And uh, that was just me being an asshole. Honestly, it wasn't my fault. I was I was actually trying to break up the fight between my chef at the time and some guys that were trying to that were harassing his wife. Ooh. And it turned into this whole thing. I got cracked across the head with a billy club. I got knocked out. 6 months later, I was bombing a hill 
on my skateboard at four in the morning because me and my ex-girlfriend got in this huge fight and, you're just and like I was just like, fuck just... you. I'm going to go skate you dick. Yeah. And, uh, I was just trying to get some energy out and I hit a crack and ended up knocked out in the middle of Broadway in Denver, which is a very busy street at four in the morning for Damn. 15 minutes. Uh, fainted on the line the next day at work with a knife in my hand. And, uh, I had to go to the hospital. Damn. Yeah. It was bad. And then I found out that I have this whole brain injury, which is bullshit. So now I don't wear a helmet because now if I if I wear if I wear a helmet, my concussion's just gonna be a, just as bad. Yeah. So like, if I don't wear a helmet, then just fuck it. Like, <laughs> fuck yeah, yeah. Honestly, I, I mean, like I can see the reasoning behind that. Yeah. Sure. Like kind of fucked either way. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh well, that sucks. But yeah, um, but it, t- it talks about like general like consumerism like that, N- not just Thrasher, but like I remember like there was a solid point where like a third of my high school and middle school was like just wearing Vans, just because like it was like the cool thing to do. Yeah, and like um, it got like that with with Chuck Taylors for a while too, and still kind of is. Like I have a lot of Chuck Taylors, but I've been wearing them since the second grade. Yeah, so I feel like I was always like one of those kids like brought them back because like for a while they were like nobody wore Chuck Taylors; those were, like poor people's shoes. Well. My family was also super poor, like collectively $35,000 a year. <laughs> so, yeah, I wore Chuck Taylors for that reason because Walmart shoes just fall apart. My mom was like, well, let's just spend twice as much money and get you nicer shoes, JCPenney, and they'll mm-hmm. last you a year. And they did. Um, but, man, I was like uh, – I, I really hate like the, uh, like the people that spend like a fuckload of money on like Supreme or something, like, just for no real reason. So overhyped, man. So right, And this comes from a guy, yourself, who, like, skates all the time. Yeah. Like, it, it, like have you ever owned anything that was Supreme? Like, no. No, I don't care. I just don't care. I've been wearing the same pair of shoes, literally. Like, not not the same pair of shoes, but the, but the same, same skate shoes. 15 years. Huh. I go I go to the store, and I buy the same pair of shoes when my shoes are done. <laughs> for 15 years. And I'm cool with that. I mean, they're reasonable price. They're Vans. They're reasonable price point. But, like, I blow them out. I blow them out. Yeah. I've got two extra pairs in my car. Especially, like, you roll your ankle on a fucking piece of concrete, and now you're going to have the side of it fucked up. You know, it shit happens. Whatever. And they're not super expensive. The only you're thing, using them for their intended purpose. The only thing I'll spend an, a, an unreasonable amount of money on when it comes to shoes is my work shoes. Yeah, because it, if, like, working on the line... Or like anywhere in the kitchen, you don't have good work shoes. You're gonna fuck your yeah. back up. My my shoes that I wear dance goes. They're 160 dollars. Yeah, but they're fucking worth it. <laughs> they're absolutely worth it. My shoes that for every day or for the skate park or whatever, fuck them. They're just gonna die anyway. Yeah, I'm not worried. You're gonna get cigarette and, burns in them and, and that's, shit. And that's the thing fuck. about like skate culture is like if you ever look, if you anybody just goes to their local skate park and they look at the kids that are actually shredding it. They're not wearing some hype beast bullshit. Yeah. They're wearing some dickies they might have gotten at Walmart and like a t shirt. No, it's because like, it's like a white shirt or like a Dallas Cowboys shirt, like around whatever, here. Whatever, dude. Just, like, it's just because, because like, <coughs> like, from what I understand, like the whole point of like skater culture was just like, man, fuck you, fuck authority. I'm just going to do what I want to do because I don't really give a shit. Yeah. And then, like, but the problem is, is that, like, and granted, the people who are making the shit that are something, dude, they're. I don't, they don't give a fuck who's buying it, you know. But they're making, unfortunately, they're making, and skate, actual skate companies are guilty of it too. Is they're making money on exactly what the culture is not about. And it's yeah. it's so unfortunate to me because, like, the culture is always about independent thought. It's about community. It's about hanging out and doing dumb shit with your friends. Like... I like how you said, like, independent thought, and you go to a high school, and, like, all the dudes have, like, one of three haircuts and, like, one yeah. of four different types of shoes. And it's like, dude, like, fucking be yourself. Like, uh, you can look at pictures of me. I was wearing jeans, Chuck, Chuck Taylors, and, like, a fucking, like, a hat. And, like, I always wore hats. That's why I'm bald now, so it works. And then, <laughs> um, and, like, a flannel shirt. Like, I wore that from, like, ages nine to present. <laughs> like, yeah. that hasn't changed. I've worn Vans, ripped up skinny jeans, and... Dude, my thighs are too big for like, jeans. Like band t-shirts for yeah. or like whatever the fuck t-shirts for so long. I mean, I had a mohawk in the eighth grade. Dude, fucking tight. Uh, I've been into punk rock my entire life. And I think that's that's an, another aspect of skate culture is like there's there's like kind of two music genres that you can kind of attribute to it. There's like either punk rock or there's hip hop. 
and yeah. both kind of really go with skate culture and like yeah. that that rebel spirit of just like fuck you yeah i've always been more like a stoner metal kind of guy oh dude I love stoner metal. <laughs> okay, like, I'm not like, gonna lie. But like, I, I, I take that back. Like, okay, just like I think that you can always go like over the edge with like stoner metal because like there's like so much like I'm like all right, like I can really go with this. And, like you get to a point of, like I'm not gonna listen to an album that's a one forty five minute song. I will. Like, like I absolutely yeah. will. Because yeah, like <laughs> I just don't have that amount of free time. <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm so guilty of that. But, like <laughs> like, uh, like the band Sleep. Oh yeah, or Sunno. Yeah, I like, love it. it. Like, like I like it, but sometimes I'm like, I gotta go to fucking work or some shit, man. That's some of the stuff you just turn on when you're cleaning your house. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, yeah. there's a reason they call it stoner metal. Those, I mean, I don't, I don't smoke weed anymore, but like, I can definitely see just being like, oh fuck yeah, this riff is heavy and it's just one note. It's just like a drone. Yeah. I this comes from a guy who loves bagpipe music. Hey nothing wrong with it. hey i saw those pictures of you at sarah's birthday hell yeah hilarious <laughs> it's all it's all about the culture no uh since st patty's day is coming up that's why i wore my rangers uh st patty's day special see it's, it's got a little shamrock on the side there dig it five buck fucking dude actually so cool she got me this anyway um st patty's is coming up. we're talking about like punk rock how do you feel about dropkick murphy's i love them dude i've, I've seen them dude what the fuck dude I'm... i saw them with rancid a few years ago no shit yeah it was a great show yeah uh, uh their first album is probably my favorite uh you know what's funny is i i, I got went on this huge kick about um like oi punk and skinhead <laughs> punk recently and i love skinhead <laughs> punk and it's a very interesting genre <laughs> I, I do. I do. And, like, the uh, origins of skinhead punk is actually kind of cool. Okay. If you, like, really go back to it, it's not what being a skinhead is turned into nowadays. No, because, like, like, skinheads nowadays is just fucking meth head bikers uh, who just, eh. like, who, like, hate minorities. So, <laughs> so let me tell you a story. I got a great story about skinheads. Uh, so there was this guy in my old neighborhood in Denver, skinhead Jason. And yeah, he told me about him. Love Skinhead Jason. I mean, Skinhead Jason, if you're listening, I love you, man. Uh, he's a sharp, a skinhead against racial, uh, skinhead against racial prejudice is what okay. that stands for. And uh, in the punk scene, you can, especially with the kind of oi type people, you can always tell what their political beliefs are by what their uh, laces are. Laces right? are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Doc like, Martens. Yeah, because the word Dark Martens will have like white, gold, black, or red laces yep. and shit. Yep. That'll kind of. So when I lived there, I lived in this apartment. It was in a seven-story walk-up. Um, this was one of my apartments I lived in that yeah. neighborhood. And uh, we lived on the third story. Four blocks away was a neo-Nazi house. And these Bottom guys mess. these guys were <laughs> the worst. And there's this bar in Denver called uh, Streets of London, and they used to hang out there all the time. Now it's under new ownership, and they're not allowed. They kicked all the Nazis they out. They kicked all the Nazis out. They should. Out. Fuck Nazis, man. But there was one day we were in there, and uh, it was me and a group of friends, and uh, there's a dude with liter literally, we walk in, he's got his denim vest on, he's sitting at the bar drinking a Pabst, he's got a whole ass swastika tattooed Jesus, on the back of his head. Jesus, that's fucking bold. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's the type of people these people were. Fucking shit, man. A whole ass swastika tattooed on the back of his head, and we go in. And we sit at the other side of the bar, and one of my buddies goes outside, and he's – this dude, like, kind of follows him. And the, it wasn't – I don't – I guess I saw it as following him because yeah. I felt like I was – he was being really predatory, but he was probably honestly just going out to burn one, if we're yeah. being completely honest. So they end up getting in, like, this argument. You can see him, like, going back and forth outside, and yeah. I walk outside, and I'm – like oh man a fight's about to break loose and all i see down colfax in den colfax is my favorite street in denver <laughs> it's the shittiest street it, i all think I it's got like a whole like wikipedia piece like if you oh, don't yeah. know what colfax is fucking look into it place colfax is, wild. is great i love colfax i i'm about to get a colfax tattoo i love yeah colfax. you were telling me about that yeah. yeah so down the street all i see like half a block away is skinhead jason and he sounds like batman and he's like six five, and he just walks around. Oh, like so he's this. like a giant of a he's dude. He's huge. Okay, and he he recycles refrigerators and like 
appliances for a living so he just beats the shit out of appliances so he can break them down to recycle the different parts and that's All what right. he does for a living <laughs> so he's like he's buff as fuck right and i see him down the street and he sees this dude with a swastika tattooed on the back of his head and you can see his eyes just brighten up and he just starts like speeding up and just like has a grin on his face and so he he walks up behind the dude and i mean Keep in mind, this whole altercation is about to go down on the patio of this punk rock bar. Jason grabs the dude by his collar, rips him over the railing, and just beat the piss out of him (laughs) on the side of the street. Jesus. Leaves him there. Like, piss out of him. Dude's completely knocked down on the sidewalk. Like, probably needs to go to the hospital. Probably. (laughs) But nobody cares about a Nazi. Yeah, so he sure. walks he walks into the bar, orders a past, and then meets us on the patio right next to where this dude is just knocked out and is just like, How are you boys doing? <laughs> and just drinks his beer. And we're just like, <laughs> fucking skinhead cheese, and I love you, dude. Thank it's you like, for like, being a homie. Yeah, it's like that's what like honestly though, like if, if if you if you want to be just like super overtly racist like that, oh, yeah. like like you need to accept the responsibility of going out in public. You deserve it. Yeah. It's like because well, like, and also, like, this is what I love is like the people that are like, like, legit, like, like, uh, minority hating skinheads are like the shittiest fucking people. It's like they're usually on like they're usually like fucking junkies or they're like child molesters or they're like they're, they're just doing like all kinds of just like awful shit and like and like we're we're the supreme race. Like, dude, you get, also get, fuck your sister. It's like, dude, you're the drug of society. Yeah. Fucking get out. I hate that shit. Yeah. I fucking hate that shit. And like, I really hate how. Um, uh, a lot of people like shit on the south. I'm like, oh, like oh, a bunch of, you know, fucking inbreds, and yeah, like you, you fuck your sister, which does happen. I mean, it does happen. But actually, did you know the highest state for incest is actually Washington? Washington State. Yeah, is is the highest state for incest. I mean, dude, the PNW is like the south of the north. Oh, really? Yes. Because, like, honestly, like it's kind of crazy. Because, like, Eastern Washington, there's like a lot of people with Confederate flags up there. Yeah. No, I mean it doesn't. I mean it doesn't make sense, uh, especially if you're going to be in the. But keep well, in mind the PNW was never part of that war. Yeah, well, the, the reason being why there's so many like I guess Confederate sympathizers up there or whatever uh, is because when they after the Civil War, a lot of them because re- like their homes are burned down or whatever. Like oh, yeah. fuck this shit. Like I'm in the fuck out. And the U.S. government was like, hey man, we'll give you money if you go ahead and try to resettle like settle that area up there. And like fuck it. Like, this place fucking sucks. It's hot as shit. It's covered in mosquitoes. Everybody knows it's fucking dead. So they moved up there, and they have families and stuff, and people are like, oh, I'm proud of great-grandpappy for keeping down the Negro man. And then, like, now that's just, like, mental yeah. state is just kind of perpetuated. I can see day. that. I can see that. I well, Like, Eastern Oregon's like that, too. Huh. Yeah. I've, I've actually never been to Oregon or Washington. See, I have, I, I have family in Van, on Vancouver Island oh, okay, in the cool. PNW. I have a bunch of Canadian family, but, like, I'd love to be an, a Canadian expat at some point in my life. I love it's hockey, just, so it wouldn't oh, be hard man. for me to, like, assimilate to Canada. I just got to convince Summer to, like, move to Canada. Dude, I'm trying to, like, it, it, if I, like, had to, like, get out of Texas, I'm going to Spokane, eastern Washington. Because, like, cost if of you, living. If you want to go work for a nuclear power plant with great benefits spokane's the way to go uh yeah because they got a big power plant mm-hmm. up there but i was looking to like cost of living is about the same as what it is here uh what you make is about the same about what it is here so like financially kind of you know pretty similar but you actually get four seasons um weeds legal so that's pretty fucking cool <laughs> your state tax like there is a state income tax but it's not that high like, yeah. like Texas doesn't even have one, which is pretty cool, but your sales tax is higher. But yeah. up there, like like all in all, it still evens out to about eight and a half percent, and here it's like eight point two five is your sales tax. So it's all said and done, it's not that much higher. Uh, and since you're living on the eastern in the state and not in Seattle, you know everything's not ridiculously fucking expensive. Like parts of California are super affordable, but those are the parts where nobody lives. Yeah, you know, like in Spokane, there's like jobs, or you can like work in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, or something like that. There's yeah, yeah. actually like built up areas of infrastructure. It's not just the middle of fucking nowhere, for sure. But I've just looked into it. A there's lot. a lot of ag there too. Yeah, maybe we'll go <coughs> fucking be a pig farmer or some shit. Hell yeah! I don't know. I'd love to do that when you, uh, like for my birthday or even like if I get married one day, like do a whole pig in the backyard dude like that's exactly like uh what i want to do i want to have like my like my my plan is to get like 15 acres or so 
and dedicate a third of that to like livestock raising, yeah, yeah. such as like, well, not, not even like a third, but have like two or three pigs. You can get the tax subsidies then too. Yeah, that's yeah. Like another big incentive. But also because like, um, I eat a lot of meat and I'm not ashamed of that. Hell yeah. Um, but the thing is that like, I like the idea of like knowing that the animal that I ate had the best quality of life I could give. Oh, dude, absolutely. Um, I think that's a really important thing, like as a consumer. Yeah. Like to think, because like something to be conscious, died. conscious about. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. Like you know, like if if I go to, you know, if I go to the you know, a fucking Italian restaurant and I get fucking. Uh, spaghetti and meatballs you understand that like an animal died so i could eat that meal oh absolutely and i hate how like in our first world society so much of us are so far removed from like process from farm to plate we don't even understand like what it takes for no to get no there. it's really crazy oh man i actually i had a thing to bring that i was gonna show you as reference uh i can't believe i forgot it so i actually had this conversation with well, <coughs> <coughs> forgive me one of our purveyors <laughs> this week um oh, okay. about like everything going on with COVID 19 yeah man and um i was like okay so how is this going to affect our product we're bringing in and it's super interesting because nobody thinks about the supply chain going on uh you know the, the restaurant i today was my last day formerly working at we had this dish that was a crab and avocado salad i mean to me, it's kind of a hack dish, but it's sold. People okay. loved it. I oh, mean, okay, cool. Like, crab meat, avocado, lemon juice, salt, pepper, like, whatever. To me, it was whatever. To, like, our guests, guests loved it, you know? So we're going to keep it on the menu because people keep yeah. fucking ordering. And, but in the dead of winter, dude, sitting there in November, December, January, when every, literally every ingredient that's on that, is so expensive and so like it's soul crushing yeah like to oh, yeah. somebody like me who's like oh my god our farmers are out here like busting ass trying to get us all this even having an arugula salad in the middle of winter is completely irresponsible yeah i mean that that's killing the restaurant arugula you can't even buy it fresh in the middle of winter yeah. Unless it's mixed with spinach. Yeah, it's like, you, you, you know what you can get fresh in winter? A fucking carrot and an onion. And they're not even fresh. <laughs> and you have, I mean, good squash comes in the middle of winter. Yeah. You, there's there's plenty of middle of winter vegetables that are good. But they're super hearty vegetables. Yes. And they're like usually tubers or like a type of gourd. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, I think, I think just... Being somebody in the industry, it is so soul crushing to have to put something out just because we have this attitude of, but like I want it, but like it's it's good, so like I want it. Yeah. It oh, dude, good. all the and it's it, dude, like I feel bad about buying fruit in January. Yeah. I mean, granted, like all of our bananas are shipped up from I'm, Central America, anyways. I mean, you can, you can look at where the supply chain is from, though. I'm talking talking to Carlos. Carlos Barron, what's up, man? Uh, <laughs> talking about the supply chain, you know, we and how it's going to affect things right now. I, I think the U.S. won't be severely, severely impacted, but there are going to be a couple ingredients that are going to go up. Oh, yeah. And price. Sure. And, and especially when it comes to, like, imported cheeses, when it comes to different things that are coming from specifically Italy, which we yeah. import a ton of food from Italy. Yeah. Like especially like certain, like particular types of grains, particular mm -hmm. types of olives, like Arbor all your olive oils. And Arborio stuff, rice. It's going to oh, yeah. go through the roof. Fuck yeah, it's going to, cause nobody's there to make it. Cause all fucking nations on quarantine. Yep. Yep. So it's, it's really unfortunate, but um, it's unfortunate that forgive me. The, Supply chain is not unfortunate. The fact that I guarantee that a lot of people in the U.S. are going to be pissed off about what they can and can't get, that's what's unfortunate. Yeah, because like, cause they've gotten so accustomed to just like being able just to have it and paying whatever. And like, oh, like we can't even offer you that regardless of how much money you have. Yeah. And like, like, like you've become like so uh, – Fuck, man, the whiskey's talking now. <laughs> it, like, you've become so to where it's just like... Disillusioned. Yeah, yeah, disillusioned to where, like, it doesn't mm -hmm. even matter. It doesn't matter, no. Because you'll be like, oh, my God, no. 
I mean, Amazon like, has free two day shipping. What the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Like, why can't I get it right now? I want my shit right now, right here. Dude, and that's what I hate about and, the first world. But <laughs> man, it's just it, it sucks to see. As somebody who has, I mean, I've been in the culinary industry for like twelve years, almost years. Uh, worked my way up from a dishwasher, and now I've, I mean, I it's would a cook or like a sous chef. So. My last job, I was a sous chef. Okay. I've held a lot of different positions. Um, I actually left a kitchen manager, like pretty much the executive chef of a restaurant, mm -hmm. to go back down to a line cook just to work at one of the tops. Or shit, that was the whiskey talking. Dude, tell you, it, the, the Baker's Mark is, is going <laughs> to hit you. <laughs> uh, just to work at one of the Forbes top 100 restaurants in the U.S. Okay. And I worked there for about a year. Oh wow, okay. Uh, it's called Linger in Denver. It's awesome it's in an old mortuary it's that's fucking it's super tight edible beats is like one of the best companies i no it's not one of the best companies i've ever worked for it is the best company i've ever worked for really it that's has about it's top 100 it has a lot of restaurants uh under their wing but it's just a fucking badass restaurant group dude it's almost crazy and if it's you like treat like, your employees with respect you get a better product oh out my god of it. who would have fucking guessed if you treat with your product with respect they are very much seasonal and, I mean, we could get written up for putting plastic in the compost bins or or if we cut off the side of an onion and didn't I mean, threw it in the trash instead of the compost, like, we would be in trouble really? as cooks. Yeah. And a bunch of the guys there, they had left high, uh, uh, like, upper positions yeah. and higher paid like positions. Like kitchen managers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. To go back down to just cooking on the line just to work at that restaurant. Hmm. It was super cool. Everybody was re really knowledgeable, really skilled. Uh, it was a tight restaurant to work at. Uh, Will Harris, our executive chef, still one of my favorite people on the face of the planet. But just to have that culture of everybody respected the food, but not just the food. They respected everybody around them when it came to the food, even when it came down to the guests. Because you know what? The owner wasn't paying our paycheck. My manager wasn't paying our paycheck. Yeah. It's the guy at the table. The guest was paying yeah. our paycheck. Or lady. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They so, were paying our paycheck. And so having that respect for the food and respect for the person next to you is just going to bring a better product to the table. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So where where could somebody go? Because you just have – have you got new work lined up yeah. somewhere else? Yeah, yeah. Um, are you at liberty to say where that is? Uh, so I'm going to be going and cooking at the Grove. Okay. Uh, for now. God damn um, it. Yeah. <laughs> I hate the Grove. I know a lot of people do. Um, unfortunately, um, hey, if the pay is good, I'm not going to die. The pay is great, um, and the restaurant's actually a good restaurant. See, I've never even eaten. There. It is a good restaurant. Okay. Um, the 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 product is quality. I mean, my dumbass passed up a job to go work with Lance McCorder up at Culture ETX a few months ago because I was shopping out jobs. I met in that Denver guy. He back. rented a U-Haul from me. I love him. Dude, like, he, 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 and looked, I, he looked like he was super, like, down-to-earth guy. He, he was just like, man, I'm just here. I love Lance. Uh, I, He's like, I don't know if he would think of himself this way, but, like, I think of him as borderline a mentor. Like, really? okay. I was going through difficult times recently, and I just went up, and I shot the shit with him. I was like, hey, Lance, hey, man, this is what I was going through. Do you, do you just mind sitting down and having a Coke with me? Like, not even a beer. Like, yeah. Uh, like we were both in our, we were both buttoned up in our chef coats. Just, can we just sit down and have a Coke and can I just talk to you yeah. for a second? And he, dude, he talked to me for like 20 minutes. I've, I've worked in that kitchen up there. Um, he is brilliant. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to sustainability. And, uh, I mean, they do, they do whole pig per butchery on, yeah. Damn. I mean, their food is amazing. He's doing, he's doing full animal butchery up there. I have to try it um, out. Oh my God. It, it, take Ashley for sure. It's a great, uh, date spot. You can, uh, shameless plug here. You can take your, uh, own bottle of wine. And then they'll actually do wine service at your table. Oh, so shit. the server will pour your bottle of wine. Yeah, I'm like for you. I've been super into mead lately, so I'll probably okay. grab a bottle of that. Yeah, I mean there. their pulpo. I will rec uh, I will recommend uh, their gambas. Okay. I will highly recommend their uh, bone marrow. Holy fuck, their bone marrow is insane. They and cook you... the marrow and everything up, like scrape it out <laughs> of the bones and. 
So so you cook it in the bone, and then at the table, you scrape it onto toast, and you eat it on toast. But it's, like, super high in iron. Oh, dude, it's calcium. delicious. Super high in protein. I've made yeah. it at some of my parties. Oh. You've got to come to one of my parties you sometime. You invited me. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> my bad. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, no, super, <laughs> super awesome restaurant in town, and... Um, I mean, there are, there are people here in town to really like look up to when it comes to the culinary industry, but unfortunately Tyler is just so set in its ways that the culinary industry doesn't have a lot of room to thrive because nobody wants anything new. Yeah. Like I, I was talking to Ashley about that. Um, cause every time we get out of town, even when we're in town, every time we get out of town, uh, we always want to, uh, not eat at a chain. Mm -hmm. we always want to go and like man like what like because like a lot of like small town america joint mm -hmm. like i want to see what their burger tastes like and it's always, like they're always a little different and it, there's this place in farmersville it's like north texas like if, if you go to denton and instead of taking like i i-20 and then going north you can take highway 69 up to greenville hang a left on business 380 okay. and you're gonna go through this little town called farmersville it's got like thirty thousand people in it there's this place called charlie's old-fashioned burgers and like it's hokey in there, but holy shit, burgers are the fucking shit, man. Like, are like they? I got this one. It's it's called like the it's like the excellent burger or some shit. It's like a double patty with like a, like a fried egg and bacon and like all this other shit. Bucks, it's fucking worth it. I think I've heard you talk about, dude. This it's stuff, it's yeah. so fucking good, man. <laughs> so I mean, I I feel like burgers are just such a wonderful way to talk about sustainability or just the food industry in general. Because There's so much it takes to make a burger. <laughs> so much. So fucking much. So much. But you know what? You know how easy it is to... Oh, my God. So fucking easy. Even... For, uh, look, I love Freddy's. Okay, yeah. The steak burger joint, yeah. I love Freddy's. But they're not fatty enough. A burger needs to have chuck in included with a couple other different cuts. I mean, you if, if I were to make my perfect burger and have tenderloin chuck and flank okay ground up together you have your lean your fatty and your medium okay yeah put them together i mean a burger just a burger comes down to the patty oh absolutely uh, the veggies are included but like it's so easy to fuck that up Yeah, because like i'm not a big fan of like like 80 20 patties being mm -hmm. in burgers i i want the 23 or 27 37 yeah. Like, like where it's real fatty, so it's nice and greasy. It's soaked in oh, the yeah. bun. You put, like, some avocado on it. Oh, dude. Well, if that fat doesn't render, then everything else. Dude, it, like, like, it's just going to be tough. Yeah, yeah, like, like it's not going to cook all, all the way through. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, and this has come from, like, I, I fuck up steaks a lot because I keep forgetting, like, hey, steak's going to cook when you pull it off your, your mm. deal. So, like. You got to uh, let it rest. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem is, like, I'll tend to, like, overcook them a little bit, but I'm perfectly okay with that. Eating a well-done steak doesn't bother me. Also, I'm making it for myself, so I don't really give a fuck. Really? Dude, it doesn't, because, like, my mom is always the type of person, like, if it's bloody, you can't eat it. So I kind of got raised to where, like, medium well is, like, her the equivalent of, like, like, I don't like my meat to be bloody. Oh, wow. I, I'm just not into it. I eat, I eat my steak blue rare every time. Just, like, like one minute like 45 seconds on each side it depends on it depends on really what i'm doing or the um, thickness so, so uh, heat yeah and how hot you want it so so like uh, what i'll do is i'll take high heat toss my steak on there um one minute on one side one minute on the other side reflip it toss rosemary and thyme and then butter okay base 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 flip it base 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 30 seconds each side pull it off let it rest I've got a rare steak. Dude, I put so, like, I use so much, because I cook pretty much exclusively in a cast iron skillet, mm -hmm. unless I'm making things that, like, I can't, yeah. I have to use a nonstick, like eggs. I'm not yeah. going to cook them in that, unless I had a shitload of grease. But I use so much fucking butter when I cook. Oh, dude. Like, like if you're not using butter when you're cooking, you're not doing it right. Well, you know, you know, a common misconception is that butter is a bad fat. No. Butter is a whole fat. Yeah. But, like, what's unsalted bad, butter is what, super good for what's you. What's bad is trans fats. Yeah. Trans Fats are bad. Whole fats are good. Butter is the equivalent of avocados when it comes yeah. to your body. Like yeah, like it's su like it's super calorie dense, so mm -hmm. you don't eat a shitload of it, but your body can digest it super well, mm -hmm. and it can convert it into energy really quickly. Oh, super fast! That's why it's a great thing to put in your coffee. Butter and coffee? Oh yeah, 
Have you never heard of that? No, dude. Nobody's ever told dude, me. Dude, take a t- tablespoon of co- uh, butter, put it in your coffee. Just like let it I'm not. A, I'm not a coffee drinker I am anymore. Super. I I used to be a. I was like eight espresso shots a day kind of person. Like quarter thin, so like I I'm like obligated to drink a shitload of coffee. I got you. <laughs> I I mean I like coffee. I just it hurts my tummy. It hurts my tummy. Dude, that's dude. Like I'm lactose intolerant, um, so I get but, the whole like belly ache. But so it's acid hurts my stomach. That's if fair. I if I eat a lot of acidic things or lsd a lot of coffee is acidic yeah yeah um so but like take a tablespoon of butter and put it in your coffee like if you have a full cup just put it in there next time you have coffee what's cool about the fat is it coats your stomach for that day really and so so i guess being the first thing you have so it takes away from any acid reflux you could have from that coffee, all sorts of things. Like all like bad burps and shit. Mm-hmm. You go, dude, that's some fucking shit. Yeah. I'll have to look into it. It fortifies your digestive system. Fuck. First thing in the day. Damn. It's super tight. Learn yeah. Something new every day. Shit, man. Um, I think we're about to wrap it up. We're hitting right. the, we're, we're about hitting the mark. Yeah, um, for sure. Is there anything left you want to talk about? Like anything, especially pertaining to your work and where people can come to find you to uh, taste out your cuisines? No, uh, <laughs> follow me on Instagram at juicebox underscore Josh sixty nine. Check it, dude. Like I'll, I'll I'll put that I'll put that in the description. I'm an Instagram whore, so just follow me. Yeah, he, he usually posts kind of funny shit. Yeah, also, man. his girlfriend's super cool. I actually kind of knew her when I was a TJC band. She was Belle as well. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like I was like, oh shit, I know her. Summer's rad. Uh, summer's summer's fucking rad. That's. Without getting into it, that's yeah. Dude, what I can, I can whole, say. like I ex- I know exactly what you mean by that. It's like that's how I feel. And actually, like yeah, she's yeah. really cool. And they're like, what do you mean? You just gotta know her. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Uh, I've enjoyed being on here, dude. I'm happy to have you on. Yeah. Finally, we were able to, like we were talking about it's like January. Glad I know. I show. know. I'm, my schedule has been whatever. Dude, whatever. fucking work, man. It's the way it is. Wait. Working sixty hours a week. That's the way it works. Yeah, dude, it, it blows. Absolutely. Um you got a closing statement or anything? Uh don't do anything I wouldn't do. Don't do yeah, there you go, man. Um Maker's Mark whiskey, I'll tell you. It's about about thirty five bucks. You can get it at your local liquor store. Super easy to spot. It's got a tan label, black lettering. It's got a big wax seal on the top. Definitely worth it. You can drink it neat. Uh we had it on the rock. One neat. giant ice cube. <laughs> and neat. And neat. Yeah, later on, we've been drinking a little neat. Uh, 45% alcohol. Doesn't have a whole lot of burn, and it's not super sweet. Uh, I don't know what it'd pair well with because I don't mix my drinks because I'm not a pussy. Um, <laughs> apparently, it pairs well with Coors Banquet. <laughs> not Coors Light. Stop drinking Coors Light. Only Banquet. Dude, uh, Coors Light is just soda water. It is just soda water. It, it, it's soda water with beer flavoring. <laughs> That being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and sign out. Thank you again for listening to the Whiskey Dan Radio Show. We are recording again tomorrow, but that episode will not be available for another week due to um, – because I just don't want to post back-to-back. So, yeah, that being said, uh, give us a give us a follow. Oh, final thing. All the episodes are now available on Spotify, and I believe they're coming on Apple as well. You can look it up via anchor.fm. They're all available there, which also put the RSS feed to Spotify. So if you want to download any episodes or if you just want to follow it from there because it's a little bit more friend, uh, friendly for your data, um, check it out. Whiskey Dan Radio, you look it up. It's one of the first things that's going to pop up. Check it out. Give it a follow. Give it a listen. Y'all stay drunk.
haven't drank since Saturday, last Saturday. Nice. Because I stayed up till five fucking thirty with Trent. And I had to be at work at 10 a.m. I didn't wake up till 1 p.m. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck, because I'm usually like a super like responsible person. And I was like, and then Ashley was like, you should probably take a break from drinking. And I'm like, yeah, probably Love should.